that Firefox OS is going to be available soon in India. This is pretty good news. No? You think so? I think it's a good news. I'm pretty excited to see Firefox OS coming to India. But to be successful in that part of the world, I'm going to need you. We're going to need you. Those people that you see with the Mozilla red shirt or people with Mozilla t-shirt, they're going to need you because they're there to help us to get the great application that you're going to build in the platform to get application that makes sense for Indian folks because there's some, I have some need in Canada, some application that I need that you may not really care about. And you have some application that I maybe don't even know. I just learned about uh, was it Burp and Zomeo that really helped me while I was in India because I was trying Yelp and it was just not working. So you know, we need those kind of applications that make sense for you. So it's probably, it's why, and it's, it's a big reason why we have that hackathon today. So what are you gonna be able to do starting from today? You're gonna be able to either build a brand new Firefox OS application that you're gonna be able to publish to the marketplace. You're also gonna be able to take any web application or web game using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and port those applications to make them work to Firefox OS. For some of you that know or use Cordova or PhoneGap, you're gonna be able also to publish your application to Firefox OS by using those technologies. So I'm not gonna talk about those too much because we're gonna have specific presentation about it. But my presentation is really about the Firefox OS. What does that mean? What is that uh, curious new platform that just came out a couple of uh, months ago? So three years ago, we had an idea and we said, hey, that would be great to have an OS that would use open web technology. That would be great to have an OS that would give access to the web to more people. For those of you that may or may know, Mozilla, this is a nonprofit organization, and her goal is really to give access to the web to more people, to give the open web to more people. And part of it is going by the smartphone. There's many people that don't have computers. They're just using smartphones. But there are many people that just don't have access to the internet. They don't have any smartphones, they don't have any other devices. And we wanted to create an OS that would give those people the opportunity to access the internet. So, one year ago, we launched the first phone. And it's going great. Right now, when we think about Firefox OS, and you're gonna, you're gonna heard this quite often today, those applications, that OS is based on web technology. HTML, CSS, JavaScript. HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. The latest and the greatest is what Firefox OS is made of. It's open source, so for those of you that uh, really like open source stuff, you can go on GitHub, you have access to the source, you can play with it, you can fix bugs, you can help us to make Firefox OS a better platform. Some facts about Firefox OS. So yes, it's still new. Yes, we launched the first phone about one year ish, but it's still available in 15 countries right now. So it's going pretty well. India is going to be one another country, another country where Firefox OS is going to be available. So I'm pretty excited about it. But we also work with seven operators, four hardware partners. So we are now making the phones. There's other people that are making the phones at Mozilla. We are creating the OS. Uh, some of those phones we had the Zihi Open, the Alcatel One Touch R, the Phone Theon. Uh, these phone peaks, the LG Fire Web. So those are some of the phones that are available right now. Some you can buy online, some you need to buy directly to the stores in those countries. But we're gonna have more phones that will be available really soon. And we have now the uh, Flame. Actually, my slides is not updated. Uh, we, you can pre-order the Flame right now. It's a phone that we release with a partner. It's basically a phone for developers. You can buy it from anywhere in, anywhere in the world you uh, can order this by uh, using the web. So those phones, they're really low entry level device phones. So they're really inexpensive. Most of the phones right now, you can get those for around, I should have do the conversion, but around $100. So that would be like 50,000 rupees. That makes sense? 5,000. Yeah, I was totally wrong. So you get the point, really expensive. Uh, and we're gonna have phones that are gonna be even more inexpensive than those devices. So keep this in mind uh, when you're gonna see, when you're gonna play with a Firefox OS device. It's made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but that does not mean that we don't have any application. We also have a marketplace, so if you play with a phone, if you play with a simulator, you 
users, the first thing they do when they got their phone, when they buy their phone, they go to the marketplace, they look for the uh, applications that are available in the marketplace, and we have most, mostly all applications that user needs. And what is great is that all those applications are made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So what is a Firefox OS application? So I suppose because we're in an hackathon, mostly everybody are uh, developers, kind of. Yeah, those that are not developers, what are you doing? Like designer, you live, what are you doing? Tell me. No, nobody's doing anything. <laughs> yeah, the food was still good, sleeping <laughs> right now. Actually, this is one thing with India, like I, it's a good thing that I'm here only for one week because the food is really, really good. I was going to eat too much all week long. So uh, what is the Firefox OS application? There's two types of application, OSINT application, package application, I'm gonna come back on those that are right after. There is also uh, how you can build your Firefox OS application. So you can use what we call the vanilla HTML5 way. So only using HTML, CSS, JavaScript, no specific APIs, no specific libraries. Uh, this is a way for you to build application. But you can also use any libraries out there. JavaScript libraries you're already using, if it's working in the browser, that should work on Firefox OS. But we have something called Web API. And I'm gonna come back on this. So right now, how many people already have a web application or, or a web game? So something working in a browser. Mostly everybody. So for those of you that already have an application, it's quite easy to port your application to Firefox OS. So right now, the only thing you would need to do is to add a manifest file to your application. So this is basically a JSON file, and this is basically where you have all the description of the application. So what is my application? What is the name? What is the version? What is the launch pad? Do I need specific permission? And uh, do I need some, actually you need some icons if you want to publish your application to the marketplace. By the way, we don't force you to publish your application to the marketplace. If you want to just put your application on our website, it's okay. If you want to create your own marketplace, it's also okay. Uh, this is part of what we call an open ecosystem. We're open and Muslim. We don't want to force people. Of course, we highly suggest you to publish your application to the marketplace because this is the first place where a user will uh, check for application. So if I have an HTML application right now, I have my manifest file, I create my manifest file, and I got a Firefox OS application. So let me show you how it's worked. What is great is that I told you we don't force you to publish the marketplace, but if you want to do this, we are not charging you to be a developer. So you don't have to pay any fees, uh, it's free. You develop your application, we don't want to charge you for this. You also can do this on any platforms, no matter if you're on Windows, OS X, Linux, you can deploy, you can create, but you can deploy also Firefox OS application. So I have Firefox installed. This is basically the only tool I need right now to build my application and to test my application. So if I go on tools, web developers, I'm gonna have something called App Manager. So it's already in Firefox, I don't have to download anything else. This is basically where I'm gonna manage my application, where I'm gonna manage where uh, I want to deploy my application. So I don't need to have a real device also. I can use the simulator. So those simulators are not part of Firefox OS, are, are not part of Firefox, but they are still free add-ons. So you just need to download which version which version you need. And I highly suggest you today to download the version 1.2 if you don't already have it. So I'm gonna start the simulator. I'm gonna click Firefox OS 1.2. And so what's gonna happen right now is that I'm gonna have uh, my simulator. So this is basically Firefox OS. Uh, a UI that you may recognize, it looks a little bit like uh, Android, but you have everything you need in that uh, in that OS. Actually, what is great, I told you it was made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, so if I want to do a phone call, even the call application, even the telephony application is made with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So everything you see on the phone is made with, the, with those technology. So what I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna take an actual HTML application. So I'm gonna use something called to do MVC. Uh, this is a project on GitHub. This is basically to uh, show people how you can create the same application using different different framework or different uh, libraries or architecture. So this is a good way for you if you want to uh, see the difference between the, those architecture or framework. You can use to do MVC and this is basically the same to-do list 
that be recreated with different framework and different architecture. So in that case, this is a simple to-do list. I'm gonna have my thing, it's working on the browser. I'm gonna say, Fred is doing presentation. And yes, now, uh, that's mm -hmm. yeah, and then. Fred is already doing the presentation. So this is a to-do list. Now it's working in the browser. So it's not even super excited. It's not also the most complicated uh, application you're gonna see, but still it's working in the browser. So now let's take that web application and make it a Firefox OS application. So what I have right now, I have uh, a little starter kit that I created. This is basically some empty CSS file, empty JavaScript file. I have some icons because I would like to publish my application to the marketplace. And the most important is my manifest file. So I already have a manifest file in my project, and this is what I'm gonna publish, this is what I'm gonna put to my actual application. So this is just to save me uh, the time not to type everything in front of you. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my actual web project, and I'm gonna paste everything in that folder. So if you want, because now you, you basically have to trust me because I'm doing this in front of you, but what was part of that project, as I told you, some images, empty CSS, empty JavaScript, it's just because I'm lazy developers, I want to start this again and again every time I'm doing a demo, or every time I'm creating a new project. But the big idea is that I had some icons because I would like to publish my application to the marketplace, and uh, the most important, I have my manifest file to my two MVC project. So if you look to the manifest file, which is basically what I told you, uh, I could have put a better name for my application and a better description, but you get the point. <coughs> I have the launch pad, I have some of the icons, and I have no specific uh, permission for that application. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go back to my app manager, and this is where I'm gonna manage my application. This is why it's called the app manager. So I'm gonna go select my to-do MVC application, <coughs> in my, uh, my first box of a starter. I'm gonna click open, and now I'm gonna see my uh, beautiful application with a really, really beautiful name. And I'm gonna try that application in the uh, simulator. So what's gonna happen? I can push an application from the app manager to the simulator or to a real device. So now I'm gonna do this to the simulator. I'm gonna click update and my application is going to be installed on my simulator. I'm going to open my application and I have my to-do list. So now, I just created the Firefox OS application. Is it the best application you ever saw before? Don't say yes. People that said yes, you're a liar. It's not true. This is not the best application you will ever see. There is a reason for that. I told you it's quite easy to port an application to Firefox OS. And it was. It was. I just have the manifest file. It was working. It's working on Firefox OS. It's recognized as a Firefox OS application. But now the UI is kind of you know, taking too much space. I have to scroll a lot, scroll down, zoom in, zoom out. So of course, it's easy to port those applications. But you need to think about different things. You need to think about the insights. Hey, my application was wor working in a browser. Most of the time, probably used on the desktop. Right now, that's gonna be used on a smartphone. You may have to think about something called responsive web design. Or at least be sure that your application is gonna have that to different screen size, no matter the technology you're gonna use. So this is the first thing you need to think about. Even if my to-do list was working great, was uh, a good display, good UI for my smartphone, I had no integration with the platform at all. Maybe it's good for some applications. Maybe it's not good for other applications. So you need to think about this when you're gonna port uh, your actual HTML uh, application or Pocky app application to the uh, Firefox OS platform. Make sense? Yeah. So now, I told you, of course, I thought about the response of web design, I port my application, I had the manifest file. I need to, or at least I want to have a good integration into Firefox OS. So what the table would tell us that HTML5, this is great technology. I was really happy when we heard about HTML5 and all you, those new elements and those new features in the, in the standard. It was pretty good for developers. And it was pretty good for users too. But still at some point when we think about mobile application, HTML5 is not quite there. We cannot access part of the hardware. 
sometimes you're going to have discussion with your customers or with people when you build a project at school and you're asking yourself, oh, should I go native? Should I go web application for mobile? And most of the time, the answer is going to be, oh, I'm going to go native because that's going to be faster. I'm going to be able to access part of the hardware that I cannot access right now with HTML5. So it's why we created something called Web APIs. So you don't have to learn a new language, yeah, you just have to learn a new API yeah, that can sit on top of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And you're going to use mostly JavaScript to do things you were not able to do with HTML before. So that's going to work well in Firefox. <laughs> so we have different level of web API. The first one is the regular oh, API. So see this like, like a security level. So when, it's come, when it comes to regular API, I can use those API on a package app and hosted app. So what does that mean? A hosted app is basically an application you're going to build. That's going to be a Firefox OS application you create. But you're going to own that application. You're going to put that application on your own server. That could be your own server. You can use GitHub Pages. You can use whatever makes sense for you. But you're going you're gonna, to um, you're gonna have that application on your server. When you're going to publish that application to the marketplace, that's going to basically make a link between the marketplace and your application. So user will still be able to see your application, but when you're going to download, when you're going to install your application, the data will come from your server or whatever you or wherever you put your application. We also have something called package application. So those applications are uh, basically what, what you know on your platform right now. This is basically a zip file that contains everything you need to run your application. JavaScript file, CSS file, HTML5, song file, images, everything you need to run your application, you create a zip file, you upload this to the marketplace. So when it comes to regular API, you can use those APIs with those two types of applications. Mm -hmm. So you have things like the alarm API, the battery status, uh, the geolocation API, the duration API, the notification API, uh, the screen orientation, so many things that you don't have access right now uh, with HTML5. So let me show you how it's working with the ABN Live sensor. So right now, if I want to access the ABN Live sensor on my phone, I can use basically two lines of JavaScript. Now I don't have many more because I put comments. But if you stick only to the like the part of the code, what I did, I said, hey, window dot have event listener. So I had an event listener on device live. And I say at that point, call my anonymous function. When that happened, I'm going to receive a value so I can use even the value, and that's going to give me the value of the MDN light around my phone in logs. So it's something between like zero, like there's no light at all, to like 50, 100, 200, it's like low light, to something like 10,000 logs, and uh, you're going to be blind. No, it's not true, but it's, it's really high level uh, light around the phone. So I can do this using JavaScript. This is pretty amazing because right now when we want to do this, say, so, okay, let's build something in Objective-C or now maybe in Swift with a new language from Apple, or let's build something in C-sharp for Windows Phone, let's do something in Java with Android. Now, using web technology, using JavaScript, I can do this on my, uh, on my application. So let me show you how it's working. I'm going to use an application uh, called the Bowblade. This is, again, available on GitHub. Uh, this is an application that my colleague started, Robert Nyman, who may or may not know him. And uh, basically, this is a good starter application when you start to create Firefox OS application because this is an application that implements a lot of web APIs. So this is pretty good to see how those are working in the live demo. What I'm going to do, I'm going to connect my real device so I can show you that it's working on a real device. I'm going to use an application called Droid for Screen so you can see what's on my device. The only thing you need to keep in mind is that that application is a Java application. The only the only purpose of that application is that you can see what is on my real device right now. The refresh rate may be slow. It's not Firefox OS. This is the Red for screen that is uh, slow to retain uh, the screen. So now I'm on my real device. What I'm going to do? I'm going to connect to that device from the app manager on my phone. I'm going to have that input that say, "Hey, there is someone I want to connect to your phone." You give him the permission? Yes. And what I'm going to do, same thing that I was doing with the simulator, I'm going to push that new application to my real device. I'm going to do update. That's going to push my application to my Firefox OS device. 
And I'm going to be able to use it like any other uh, application that I was using on my simulator. So let's go to the MDNY sensor. So let's zoom this. So now I have like 80, 69 words. If I put my M, it is at some point that I hear zero. No more light. I had the sensor. If I continue, if I remove my M, you're going to see that. Uh, the, uh, the value change. So this is the value that is detected by the hardware with two lines of code. I, would have, I was able to get that data. And now you may ask me, Fred, now that I know how to do this, what would, like, why would I use this? Maybe you want to use this, maybe you're creating a reading application, and you know, uh, you may want to change the background color when uh, people are reading in their bed with no light because those white backgrounds are quite aggressive for your eyes. Or maybe you want to play with this with different games. Maybe you want to make a game with uh, those kind of features. So this is one way to do this. If I go look at the code, I go to the Firefox, so let's borrow play, go look at the JavaScript file, web app, and the end, and the end life. You see that I have a lot more line of code right now with known reasons that I did a query selector to get the button to attach those even to the button, but the thing that you need to keep in mind is the window that on device life. So this is another way to add an event listener in JavaScript. And basically, again, I'm like an anonymous function, and I got uh, the looks value by the wing event dot value. So again, two lines of code, I'm able to get the value of the MD line. So this is what is really great with web APIs that have access to those APIs using JavaScript. So part of the hardware, I can access those data with JavaScript. Let me show you another example. There's the battery status. That could be really convenient. If you're building a game, as an example, you want to be sure that you're gonna save the game before the battery is dead. Because there is nothing more annoying than you're playing, you're beating your ice core, and whoops, phone is dead. So you can do this right now using JavaScript. Again, simple lines of code, navigator.battery, that's going to give me my battery object. I'm going to be able to access different information. Battery the charging, battery the time, time of charging, battery discharging time. I'm going to be able also to have some info listener. Is the level of the battery change? Is uh, the charging time change? So there's a lot of things I can do right now, again, with JavaScript. And just to show you that I'm not lying, I'm going to show you on my real device how is it working. Again, using the boil plate. So I have the battery status at some point. And now the value is not being really exciting because my uh, phone is fully charged. But uh, you're going to see on that screen it's one of the percent because my phone was fully charged. But also uh, the fact that I can get the battery charging at true is because my phone is connected by USB to my uh, computer. So again, using some JavaScript was quite easy to do. Does that make sense? Are you excited to be able to do those kinds of things with JavaScript? Yes. yes. You can say no, that's not the case. But I am pretty excited to be able to, say, to do this with JavaScript. So the, there is another level of API called the Privilege API. So those APIs, you can only use those if you create a package app. In that case, when it comes to package application, you need to submit your application to the marketplace. We're going to review the application to be sure that you're not going to use the API to do some bad things for the users, but we're also going to review the available quality of the application when you do this. So there is a process like any other marketplace. There's the browser API, the contact API, the device, device, device storage, sorry, uh, the TCP socket API, so if you also have access to some good APIs that make sense uh, for your application. So there is uh, something called the browser API, and now you may ask me, Fred, I kind of don't understand where is it going because you have a browser API in a phone that is kind of a browser because it's using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And in that OS, you also have the Firefox browser. So there's a lot of browser thing in your HTML platform. But that will make sense if you're creating an application that used to, uh, that have to do some OAP authentication. So with application like Twitter, or as an example, I'm building a remember the milk application. One day I'm gonna finish that application because I'm always giving that as an example. And I need to access to the data from the user. 
I don't want the username and password. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create an iframe. And in that iframe, the magic word is mouse browser. So I'm going to put mouse browser. This is probably the only time that I like using an iframe. And I'm going to point people to the uh, Remember the Milk website. This is another to-do list. So maybe I have uh, something in to-do list. But it's a great website. I'm going to point people there. People need to log in. But they're not giving me username and password. They just use the iframe. So this is like any browser, any browser window. They enter their username and password. And they said, yes, I want Fred's application to have access to my data. In that case, Remember the Milk will return me a link. And in that link, I'm going to have a specific key that I can use after to access the data without getting the, without having the username and password. So after that, just remove the iframe. I don't need the iframe anymore. So how can I do this? Because I use the mouse browser keyword in my iframe, I have access to the event listener. Again, I can use many of those kind of uh, event type to get my information. So in my example, what I use is the uh, most browser location change. So when the URL changed, I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to say, hey, is there the key parameters? If it's there, it's probably what I want. I'm going to grab the key, remove the iframe, and now I can call the web services with API from Remember the Mail, use the key, and get access to the data. So it's pretty useful. This is another API that we have right now. There is a third level, a certified API level. And this one is kind of tricky, because you cannot kill, you cannot use those APIs right now. It's only for application part of the OS or applications that are coming from the OEM. So now you're going to tell me, Fred, why are you talking to me about APIs I cannot use? It's still good to know that those APIs exist. Because at some point, they may move for, from the certified level to the privileged or even to the regular level. So you have things like the camera API, the permission API, the web SMS API, web telephony, voicemail. So it's kind of interesting, but you cannot use them right now. But good to know that they are there. So you may be uh, kind of worried about the fact that there is a camera API, but you cannot use it right now. So what do we created? We created something called Web Activity. And Web Activity will give you access to some of those APIs that you don't have access right now, but in a stricter way. So you have things like the Browse API, uh, Browse Web Activities, the Open Web Activities, the View, the Pick, the Record, the Share, the View. That access, you can get all that information online in documentation. I will show you some examples. With those web activities, you can use them on package or host to the application. So there is no problem. Depending on the type of application you're creating, you can use all those web activities. There's the pick activities, probably the one you're going to use the most. As an example, right now, I need a picture in my application because I don't know. I'm creating a kind of Instagram application or Twitter or whatever I'm creating. I need a picture. What I'm going to do in JavaScript again, I'm going to, I'm going to do new model activity. The name of my activity is pick. The data that I want would be a JPEG image. What's going to happen when I'm going to run, when that, that code's going to run? You're going to see that screen to the right. The user will have to select either images from the wallpaper, from the gallery, or will use the camera to take a new picture. So as a developer, you don't know where that picture comes from. But it doesn't matter. You just need a picture. The user will give you one picture. So what's going to happen at that point? I'm going to use, again, JavaScript. I'm going to say, hey, is my activity was a success? If it's the case, let's use the image and uh, do whatever I need to with the image that the application returned me. In a case that the user click cancel, for any reason, change his mind, if he wants to share uh, images with you, you're going to be able to handle this with the activity on error. So again, using JavaScript. There's also the dial web activities. So same kind of thing as the pick activities. I'm going to use new most activities. I'm going to say, hey, this time the name of my activity is dial. I'm going to put a phone number in there. So what's going to happen at that point? Because you don't have access to the telephony API. We don't want developers to make phone calls on the behalf of the user. So with that web activities, what's going to happen? The telephony application will open. The number will be there. No phone call will be made until the user click the green button or just close the application. So this is a way for you to make it easier for the users without any security or privacy issues. You can also be a handler of those activities. So right now I told you how to use them, but you can be a provider of those activities. So what I can do now in my manifest file, 
And this is why I told you Manifest 5 is important. Of course, this is the description, this is where I put the permission, but this is basically the heart of my Firefox OS application. So what I'm gonna do, do right now, I'm gonna have this to my manifest. I'm gonna say, hey, if there's an activity, if it's called a pick activity, and the application is requesting GPEG or PNG, I can do this. And please launch index.html if that happens. So you're telling the OS that you can manage those kind of pick activities and that you can provide PNG and uh, PNG and JPEG. If that happens, my application is going to be open. And this is great because this is another way to have my application used by the user. So what's going to happen in that case, remember the, the screen that was on the right when you saw wallpaper, gallery, camera? You're going to have a port option, and that's going to be your application that's going to be available in that menu. So in that case, if my application is open, again, using JavaScript, we're going to say, hey, uh, is my application got open because of an activity? If it's a pick activity, let's manage, uh, let's send a picture to the user, uh, to the application requesting the uh, picture. So again, I can be a member of web activity. So it goes both ways. What is great right now is that if you build your Firefox OS application using web activities, your application is going to be, uh, you're going to be able to make your application run on Android devices. Those users will have to, uh, will need Firefox installed on those devices, but you're going to be able to install your Firefox OS application on, on an Android device if you use Firefox, and that's going to run like any other application, any other Android application. So think about it, when you're building Firefox OS application, it's not just about reaching the users that will have Firefox OS device. Because you're building a web application, you're gonna reach more people, but also you're gonna be able to reach every user that are uh, the Android platform. So pretty interesting. So how to start? Of course, as I tell you, as I told you, you can build from scratch.